anybody ever been to Atlantis in the Bahamas? Good. Has anybody ever bought a cheeseburger from Atlanta in the Bahamas? Yeah. How much was it? How much? It was like seven or something. It was ridiculous. Like twenty. Oh, really? Oh, twenty bucks for a cheeseburger. What did you think when they charge you twenty bucks for a cheeseburger? <laughs> Okay. Well, <laughs> she thanks that. But if it was your money, what would you think? I would be sad. They're ripping me off. Right? They're ripping me off because I can get a cheeseburger back in Columbia for five bucks. They're ripping me off. Isn't that what you think? Or not really. Why? Where do you think they have to get the ingredients to make the cheeseburger? Not on the island. They have to have it shipped in. What happens if you have to have things shipped in? Cost goes way up. Storage, refrigeration, all of that. Now, the Caribbean is a wonderful destination. They make millions if not billions a year in tourism. What's the problem? Why isn't everyone on the Caribbean island rich from this? Yep, which means as soon as the money comes in, what? It goes back out again to get things like computers and automobiles and groceries and, and uh, coal to, to fire the power plant. You see that? The Caribbean islands are a great place, but they really don't have the natural resources to be sustainable. They have to buy everything off of the island. Now, if they could support themselves, they would all be very, very rich in the islands. But because as soon as they get the money, they have to spend it again. That's what leakage is. Now, we're pretty fortunate in the Carolinas because if we want to get a cheeseburger or the ingredients for a cheeseburger, how far do we have to go to get the cheese and the cow? Probably not far. Now, I'm not an expert, but I got to think there's you know, people grow, you know, growing, you know, vegetables nearby the cities, right? Are there like cattle ranches in Carolina? I'm really asking, right? I used to live by one. Okay, so I mean, yeah, they're, they're raising cattle right down the road, and so if we get a one a cheeseburger, we can pick that. I want that cow right there, right? That's my cheeseburger, right? So all, we're pretty self-sufficient or self-sustaining. So as a result, when we make money, we get to keep a lot of it because we can still spend it within the community. But again, the Caribbean islands are places that don't have the natural resources. It's a big problem, right? And probably uh, Dr. Cardenas, you know, I would ask you, okay, let's deal with the Galapagos Islands. I guarantee you it's the exact same thing. That's why the Galapagos, probably not all that cheap because they gotta bring everything in. Make sense? Right. You like that exercise? I used to lecture on this all the time and put people to sleep. So I came up with this. Is okay. Let's let's do it in real. All right. Um, I need everyone to pass the money and the signs all the way down this way, please. Thank you very much, Scootopian residents. You did a great job. Okay. So again, the Caribbean islands. Where do they get their milk? Cheese, eggs, and meat from outside. Maybe they get the eggs locally. But do you see the challenge? If you could just start rolling that up and we'll get out of here quick. So, multiplier effect good, leakage bad. Simple as that. And it, this is not just tourism. Has anybody come from a place um, where the town's just dying? Yeah, well, yeah, like Detroit. The, the, the money, the industries are going away. So the money is going away as well. The jobs are going away. And so Detroit and some of the mill towns in the Northeast are experiencing tremendous leakage. Right? And that's a problem. Oh, you're just thinking out loud. Okay. All right. Switch gears now. Um, 
we talked about CBBs as a really good job. How about travel agencies? Anybody in here want to be a travel agent? Anybody? Okay. Don't. <laughs> Travel agencies, as we talked about in the six age of tourism, what's happening? They're dying. Why? Because people like me can book it online. Simple as that. Used to be that there were tons of travel agents everywhere helping people. Not so much anymore. In fact, what's your name? Casey. Casey, right? Casey, let's say you were born uh, maybe about 30 years ago. Okay? And you were very successful as a travel agent, got your IATA number, um, just had a lot of clients, and this thing called the internet comes along, and you're pretty smart. You're thinking, oh no, this is bad news for me, right? Because although people are, I'm booking with me right now, I can, I can see maybe three, four years into the future when they're not gonna be, and my business is gonna go bankrupt, right? And again, remember we talked, did we talk about commissions in here, travel agent commissions? Yeah. Travel agents serve as a middle person, all right? I come to you and you book my travel for me. The internet, what does that do to the middle person? Takes it away. And, and not, yeah, the internet is not just picking on you, KC. It's picking on everybody. eBay, right? Anybody buy stuff on eBay? I buy it all the time. What are you doing? You're getting rid of the middleman, right? The computer now is the middleman and it charges a whole lot less commission. Again, agents used to have computers that talk directly to the airlines and the hotels. Now, who has computers that do that? Everybody, right? Used to make money based on commission, 10%, okay? Well, Casey, you're actually pretty smart. You say, okay, when life hands you lemons, I'm gonna make lemonade, right? And you're adaptable, you can change. So you come up with a really good idea. Um, what's your name there? Freddy. Nope, just got right here. Yeah, Josh. Josh, all right, Josh. Um, congratulations, you're the vice president of marketing for Microsoft, right? Big important guy. And um, you've got a sales force that travels a lot. They're always out selling Microsoft and promoting it and everything. And so your travel budget runs about $20 million a year of just your people traveling, okay? Casey comes to you and says, Josh, I got a deal for you, buddy. How would you like to save money traveling? You're interested, right? She says, I bet I can get your travel budget down <coughs> to $15 million a year. You interested? Here's what Casey's gonna do. She says, look, you don't have to pay me anything. There's only one thing I need from you. You have to tell all the people that travel that they have to book their arrangements through me. Why? She's gonna control the travel. And here's what happens, Josh, is that when your people go travel, and they book their hotel, and they book their rental cars, right? Do you think they're watching their money? No. Where are they staying? Rich Carlton, Four Seasons, 400 bucks a night? Hey, no problem. Put it on the, the Microsoft card, right? And so that's why your travel budget is so hot. So here's what Casey's going to do. She says, well, look, Josh, you don't have time <coughs> to track your people in travel. I'm going to do it for you. I'm not going to put them in Ritz Carlton's at 400 bucks a night. I'll put them in a Marriott. I'll get them a good deal, 100 bucks a night. And instead of getting the Mustang convertible rental car, I'll give them, um, you know, um, uh, the Honda Civic, right? Do you see what she's doing for you? She's controlling the travel budget for you. Now you're not paying her to do it. How's she making her money? What's 10% of 15 million? 1.5 million. You okay with that? Yeah. Casey's pretty okay with that, right? Are you happy? A little 
bet she just saved you $5 million a year. All right? Bill Gates is going to call you up and say, damn, Josh, good job, buddy. Keeping the travel budget reasonable, right? And how much did it cost you out of your pocket? Zero. What's your question? Would it be cheaper to have a company just hire a travel agent? Well, see, what's your name? Kyle. Uh, Kyle, you're pretty smart. Because Josh is happy right now because he's saving $5 million a year. But at some point, Josh does this for a year or two, and what does he start to think? I can just save a lot of money. Hell yeah! She's making up $1.5 million off of me a year. Why is she getting that commission? So Josh goes to Casey and says, Casey, you had a good run. Made a lot of money. Got a nice house on Lake Murray, right? Houseboat. Um, we're going to stop this arrangement. I'm going to give you. Um, I'm going to give you a choice. Okay. I can go to find someone else, or I'll hire you as one of my employees. So what happens to the 10% commission? What happens to the 10% commission? No, it goes to Josh. He gets it back. He sets up. He sets up his own in-house travel agency, and instead of someone getting the commission, it just goes back into his travel budget. Right? And so he says, eh, I'll pay $100,000 a year. Take it or leave it. Sure. Right? You already got a pretty big windfall. You know how to do it. Now you get a salary. You're not making as much as you did before. But hey. It's better than jobless. You see? I like your attitude, Casey. There you go. All right? And you already got $3 million in the, in the nice house, right? So that's a, what a lot of travel agents did is they became in-house travel agencies. Okay, and we actually have one here at USC. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, going to Europe in March, and I couldn't book it myself. I had to go through the USC travel because they don't want Professor Smith staying at the Ritz Carlton or uh, you know Four Seasons or whatever. And so you know they're they're keeping an eye on my travel. <coughs> they want me flying first class, which which you know it's okay. I, I get to go to Europe and I'm not flying first class and I'm staying, you know, at a Wyndham or whatever. That's fine with me. So everybody kind of wins. Does it make sense? All right. So that's one thing.